All right. Well, welcome to today's webinar, everyone. Uh, Cunard Luxury on a Grand Scale with Cunard and Clea. This webinar is brought to you by Baxter Media. I'm your host, Zephan McMillan, Virtual Events Coordinator at Baxter Media. And today is Tuesday, May 23rd. Our presenters are Monica Pascarello from Cunard. And of course, we're excited to also have Charles Silvia, Vice President, Trade Relations and Industry Special Envoy at CLIA. And uh, the presentation today is a pre-recorded presentation, but we are lucky enough to have Monica Pascarello here live as well to answer your questions at the end of the webinar in a Q&A session. So feel free to type your questions into the Q&A section of the public chat box, which is located on the right hand side of your screen and we will answer them live at the end of the webinar. And uh, we, we of course know that your time is valuable so we're gonna try to keep it to about an hour here. We may go a little over with the Q&A but uh, we're gonna see if we can keep it to about an hour. So please again, submit your questions in the Q&A section if you have any throughout the presentation. Please also note the uh, two $100 Amazon gift card prizes. Uh, the winners will be announced at the end of the webinar. So uh, only those who attend for the full webinar will be entered into the contest. So um, stick with us folks to the end. And today's broadcast is live. So your patience is appreciated during any technical difficulties that may arise. And the webinar is being recorded. A link to the uh, webinar recording will be sent to all registrants within about 24 hours once it has been processed. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And uh, with that, uh, Monica and I are going to turn off our cameras and we are going to go ahead and start the webinar. So again, thank you so much uh, for being with us, folks, and we hope this is a, a great webinar for you today. Thank you, Zephan. And I'd also like to thank the entire team at Baxter Media for this wonderful opportunity. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being on today's broadcast. Looking forward to a wonderful presentation from Cunard Line. This particular webinar is very, very uh, important to me. It's a personal webinar for me because I have spent much of my time as a cruiser aboard Cunard vessels. In fact, uh, this is my happy place, what you're seeing right now. That's me seated in the chart room, which is a lounge aboard Queen Mary 2. And of all the cruises that I've been on, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and I've been cruising since I was just about 10 years old, so more than 40 years, all the cruises I've been on, I've actually sailed upon Queen Mary 2 the most. And I can tell you that there is something for everyone aboard a Cunard vessel. And we will soon hear from our presenter about everything that is happening at Cunard. So I couldn't be happier to be here. Normally, I would provide you with a clear update at this moment, but we are just off the uh, heels from our highly successful Cruise 360 event. Our 2023 Cruise 360 was held in Fort Lauderdale last month. And it was a huge success. More than 1,700 travel professionals came together. So we at CLIA are, are working toward the fall, believe it or not, getting ready for our 2024 launch of membership and travel trade membership in North America. So we'll have more information about that very soon. But without further ado, I would like to introduce our esteemed presenter from Cunard, Monica Pascarello, CTC. Uh, she is Business Development Manager, National and Strategic Accounts. And I'd like to share a little bit about Monica with you. Uh, interest in travel and European culture was part of Monica's life growing up as the eldest child of German immigrants. Love of travel continued through college and Monica's industry career began as a travel agent for a small family-owned business in her home state of New Jersey. Over the years, she was employed in specialty fields of group travel and marketing in Delaware, Florida, and eventually Georgia, including American Express Gold and Platinum Car Travel Call Center. In 1999, Monica was hired as the Atlanta-based 
Business Development Manager, representing both Cunard and Seaborn to travel agencies in several southern U.S. states. Over the years, the team changed, and she worked with travel advisors to promote not only Cunard, but Princess as well. Last year, Monica joined the Cunard National Accounts sales team. Her focus is connecting with her accounts to grow Cunard sales throughout North America. Ladies and gentlemen, Monica Pascarello. Oh, thank you, Charles. Uh, I just, it, it really warms my heart to know how much you uh, admire and enjoy Cunard. You are a Cunarder. I am a Cunarder, and I welcome everyone here aboard. So today, I wanted to um, not only talk about what is new with Cunard, but also to help everyone listening understand more about who is the customer, and we'll go really in depth. And I feel that at the end of the session, everyone will be uh, not only so much better informed about Cunard, but even those that have sold Cunard very successfully for years will certainly learn something new. So on behalf of all of us at Cunard, and especially our VP of Sales of North America, Jamie Paco, we welcome you aboard. Those of you um, involved in social media, if you want to know more about Cunard and stay fully engaged with Cunard, make sure you follow Jamie at Cunard NAM Sales. That's North American Sales. Jamie goes live every Thursday on Facebook, and you'll learn something new when you hear our Cunard Spills the Tea sessions each week. So I um, mentioned to you that we'll go over what is new and what is happening. Um, but first, before that, we have just a quick 60-second video that I want to share with you because it, it will show you the different images and things that we share on social media to further engage consumers and drive that business back to you. Let's cue the video. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and also, I hope you got a sense from the music and how upbeat it is and how contemporary and exciting it is, as well as the images that Cunard is something very, very special. So while we are um, a brand um, of heritage and legacy of over 180 years, Cunard is continuing to evolve and um, it's always something new at Cunard. And uh, you're going to hear about our new ship under construction, Queen Anne. There is so much to say, but really our legacy is over 180 years of bringing people together. So I hope that you'll see by the images here, not only black and white, but also things that are much more recent and modern, that Cunard is truly something for everyone. Well, something that we are certainly well known for is our White Star service. And that is something that people really enjoy about Cunard. And that's something that you, as an advisor, can directly um, share with your clients that when they travel aboard Cunard, they can experience an incredibly high level of professional service and attention. It's part of everything we do on board our ships. There are also some speaking points that I want to point out to you that will help you in conveying the Cunard message to potential guests. And number one is the fact that guests aboard Cunard feel special. They appreciate the White Star service. They're very grateful for the very high crew to guest ratio. 
They love the exclusivity of some of our top, top suites called the grills. And of course, they love all the signature experiences of not only sharing a hot toddy and a warm, cozy blanket, perhaps in Hubbard Glacier, but afternoon tea, even on a rolling trolley out along the promenade. And we'll talk about some of those additional Cunard really fun and special features. So not only do guests feel special, they are inspired. And aboard Cunard, it's all about iconic experiences, our world-class insights program. So we have a wonderful enrichment and educational and um, uh, entertaining lecture series called Cunard Insights. We even have event voyages that are focused on uh, specific interests, but it's the wonderful cities that we travel to and the scenic beauty of, of, of where we cruise that is very inspiring to guests. And also the fact that they enjoy the freedom. So yes, this is something that you need to convey to guests about Cunard. It is all about flexibility. Dress up or be relaxed. Time to just enjoy sea days in an ultra spacious environment. I think what you'll find is based on the size of our ships and the guest capacity and what we call internally the space ratio, you'll find that Cunard really offers that ultra spaciousness in what we would consider medium to large size ships, but yet port intensive itineraries and really offering the best of everything. And so at Cunard, we like to say each evening is like a night out on the town. And that's something that's special and different um, than other cruise lines, perhaps. Yes, we have wonderful itineraries and we're taking people to amazing places. But it's also then the experience that they have while on board that makes them feel so special. From wonderful dinners to ballroom dancing to just the social nature of the ships. Any of you that have traveled with us before, you probably already know this, how wonderful it is to uh, engage and, and, and talk with others from all around the world. It is so social. And then of course, our gentlemen hosts who um, will, will dance with some of those solo travelers, as well as now we've added some female hosts because we are seeing uh, just as many single men as well as women travelers. So it's fun and enjoyable for everyone. But the point of Cunard that we want to really stress here today is the fact that we are luxury on a grand scale. So based on the size of our ships, and they are iconic, and they're built for the luxury guest. So not only spacious public areas, so many different activities from which to choose. I mentioned ballroom dancing lessons. So each day at 12 noon, we have our international dance hosts that will teach the dance step of the day. And then guests love to practice in the evening before dinner and after dinner, enjoying that time in the Queen's Room, which is a signature room on board all of our ships. It's uh, an opportunity for guests to not only be social, but dance to live music and incredibly talented musicians and performers uh, entertain there as well. Some evenings are gala nights. Is every night dress up? Not necessarily, if they want to, sure. But we do have certain gala evenings. And what we mean by that is black tie is the norm, or certainly jacket and tie required. But there are other places on the ship that people can enjoy more casual atmosphere. And we'll talk about that. The Golden Lion Pub offers more casual pub lunches, trivia, karaoke, uh, small venue type musician entertainment, uh, lots of fun there. And it is a more casual environment. And then in our Royal Court Theater, something from London's West End or New York's Broadway, special shows and performances there. Certainly, uh, health and wellness is important on Cunard, and we'll show you uh, some images about the Mareal Wellness and Beauty Spa. Cunard is an innovator in many areas of the cruise industry. We were the first to ever have a library on board a ship, and that's another signature or iconic venue on board our ships that guests love to go uh, and just kind of look through all the beautifully lit bookcases about classic novels and uh, wonderful publications from all over the world. 
our most magnificent afternoon tea at sea. And every day on board Cunard is something very special, served in the Queen's Room to a three-piece string trio. And uh, people can gather and discuss what they've been doing all day and what their plans are for the evening. So it is so much fun. And then also, don't forget, some of the most spacious suites at sea with exceptional dining. And that is truly luxury on a grand scale. So speaking of accommodations and dining, you know, this is a signature selling point for Cunard. And you see so many other lines doing this now. And I say to myself, that's new. We've been doing this for over 180 years. There are very specific accommodations that directly correlate to the dining venue that the guests enjoy their, their meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So our top suites are called Queen's Grill. This happens to be the main living area of a Q1 category, Queen's Grill suite aboard Queen Anne. And then for those dining in all the for those in all the Q category staterooms, we have the Queen's Grill Dining. That is their own specialty dining venue. Their table is assigned to them. It's waiting for them each evening. They can come in between 6:30 and 9 p.m. and order their meal and enjoy an amazing dining experience. For those looking for something also very, very nice, we have Junior Suites and we call them Princess Grill. They too have their own beautiful dining venue with excellent variety of choices very uh, and varied menus and uh, even some table side preparation in both of those flambés and such, making it a very special and unique experience. Now, we have many, many balcony categories aboard Cunard. We have our Britannia Club. This is our top category of balcony accommodations that also has its own dining venue called the Britannia Club. And guests also like that because just as with Princess and Queen's Grill, they have their own table assigned to them. It is for them and their party during the entire voyage. And they come in when they like, stay as long as they like. And then, of course, balcony staterooms, ocean view, as well as inside staterooms all dine in the grand and elegant two-story Britannia dining room. So you see at Cunard, we really offer value at every price point in every category. What I think is really particularly fun, and especially as you are conveying the Cunard experience to your clients, is the fact that it's more of a mindset versus necessarily what people pay. All of these different guests are interested in art, culture, music, science, and I'll mention a little bit more about that shortly. But here's also a great picture of the Britannia Dining Restaurant aboard our brand new Queen Anne that I'm going to share with you some more images. But the point of it is, whereas in the past, in the main dining room called Britannia, we always had early seating and late seating. We still offer that because ideally there are guests who are traveling as a group or a family. They like to know where their table is. They like to get to know the wait staff and vice versa. And they like to have uh, that wonderful and very special dining experience. However, now at Cunard in Britannia restaurant, we also have what's called open seating so that your clients can choose when they would like to come into the dining room. It doesn't have to be the same table each evening. So you see, it really offers something that is certainly much more flexible and varied. I wanted to just show you a few images of some of the different accommodations to give you an idea. But of course, Google is your friend. Take a look. We have amazing resources online, including our own YouTube channel. But for instance, this happens to be a balcony stateroom, and we call it Britannia because interior ocean view and balcony staterooms all dine in the elegant and beautiful Britannia dining room. Aboard Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth, the two sister ships, the dine, the uh, also similar situation, Britannia dining room, and we also have beautiful balcony accommodations there as well. Now, as we move into the grills, Junior Suites, Princess Grill, here's an example. This looks like a 20 foot long sofa. Sorry, the image is a little distorted, but you get the idea that these are now more spacious uh, and certainly larger accommodations and slightly different configuration on Victoria and Elizabeth. And then I mentioned to you the very special nature 
of the fact that in the Britannia Club, Princess Grill, and Queen's Grill, our Mater D's are offering different flambe desserts or preparation table side for certain items like Dover sole and certain beef preparation. And so therefore, it's an added element of service, a more, what I would say, European continental type service. So when we look at um, some of the top suites in Queen's Grill, for instance, this happens to be Queen Elizabeth. Uh, the suites are, as I mentioned, some of the largest at sea, no kidding. And this happens to be the main uh, living area of one of the top Queen's Grill suites on Queen Elizabeth. As we look at something like Queen Mary II, um, we have duplex suites that are some of the largest at sea. So this is the first level. Um, living area and then as we go upstairs to the bedroom area and uh, separate marble tub and shower and dressing area and walk-in closets it's it's just all quite amazing so as far as other signature venues i mentioned to you our evening entertainment in the royal court theater we have these beautiful box accommodations on victoria and elizabeth that people can reserve and so they're getting some special VI treatment there with some uh, beverage delivery and certainly a wonderful view of the stage and uh, uh, great seats for the performances. You know, think about um, your clients that are interested in ballroom dance. Queen Mary II has the largest dance floor at sea, a wooden dance floor. We offer now um, on our newer ships a sprung dance floor. So. Ballroom dancers love that. It's certainly easier on the feet and the ankles. And um, ballroom dancing to live music is a very big part of what we do on board Cunard. Mareel and the health and wellness aspect is important. And so therefore these heated loungers with a front row view of the ocean are absolutely spectacular on our ships. And the Golden Lion Pub, where we'll have a pub lunch or sometimes a pub dinner. Not everything is always fancy and formal. It's uh, super fun and casual and playing darts and singing songs. It's what it's all about. I want to point out to you, too, and you're probably scratching your head right now, the Kids Center, the Zone, what's that all about? Are there children that travel aboard Cunard? The answer is absolutely yes. Uh, we have a wonderful designated area with youth counselors that are taking good care of the children of different age groups so that grandparents and parents can enjoy themselves. Think of it this way, though. The, the focus of the children's programs, a lot of it has to do with more cultural and educational programs so that uh, parents can feel good about uh, the programs that the children are involved in. And the reality is there are more people traveling with multi-generational groups in today's world, and especially the grandparents that want their children, uh, grandchildren, to um, have that leg up uh, as they um, go through their education, as they're applying to colleges and universities, as they're growing in their careers. Isn't it great to know the social graces? How do I introduce myself in a social setting? Which fork and knife do I use? Maybe what is the wall stand step? And all of these things are amazing life skills that are just all part of the Cunard experience, right? These are the things we do on Cunard. So I think more and more of you are becoming intrigued and you say to yourself, I do believe I have guests for Cunard. What this next section addresses are the four different quadrants, if you will, of psychographics in terms of who is the Cunard customer. So first and foremost, this, is, this one is probably one of the most obvious. These are Cunarders, people who have already sailed with us before. Typically, they're in their mid-60s and most likely retired. But what they say is, uh, to in terms of attitudes about this group towards travel, that Cunarders want to learn new things, but they don't want to be overloaded with activities. They like to pick and choose how they fill their time. Of course, they're well-traveled, and so therefore they are drawn to reliable brands with the reputation for high standards, and that's why they've come to Cunard in the first place. But also, I want to say thank you right now to all of you in the travel advisor community. We've um, had a wonderful and successful 
um, month of praise for travel advisors through travel advisor appreciation, but it is due to your recommendation, your suggestion, your personal um, information and sharing of what you know about Cunard that brings guests to Cunard. So we thank you for that. Now, here's um, certainly a quadrant that you certainly already have in your portfolio. And this is for guests that are already cruising. They love cruising, but these are cruisers wanting more. These are regular cruise goers who haven't chosen Cunard before. Maybe they just didn't know uh, what Cunard was all about, but they are cultured with the love of the outdoors. Um, they are all about experiencing luxury on vacation. They consider themselves well-traveled, but most still want to visit new destinations, and that's where we come in. Cunard, after over 183 years of successful history and developing amazing itineraries throughout the world, we have places in the world that they would love to travel to, but have not yet been and can certainly get there on a Cunard vessel. So we see that nine nights average length of cruise, and this all plays into, I think, the new uh, view of cruising. This area in the luxury space is growing. I think we're all seeing it, and you absolutely have the possibilities and options to sell Cunard. Now here's a kind of a fun fact, and this is something you may not have considered before, but non-cruisers love us too. So those that make the personal suggestion or recommendation to their clients to say, you know what, you haven't cruised before. However, you love to use your vacation time to relax and unwind. Uh, maybe you have a lot of places that you're interested in and you're ready, you're hungry to explore those new destinations. These guests are social, curious, and environmentally conscious. And so therefore, they also are a great match for Cunard. And then that fourth quadrant that we talk about, and this one also is a little bit more obvious, those wanting the very best. These are the true luxury consumers. It's not necessarily associated with an age, but it is associated with an air of exclusivity. They're simply drawn to high ends. They look for successful and accomplished brands. And so therefore, Cunard is for them, and those are your sweet guests, okay? Princess Grill, Queen's Grill, they're looking for more square footage. The more you pay, the more you get, and there is incredible value associated with that from every aspect to the accommodations themselves, to dining, to extra added privileges that are available to them in those categories. So now let's take a look at the fleet and what we have to offer. Queen Mary II is almost as iconic in New York Harbor as the Statue of Liberty. She is truly our flagship at just 100, or I say just, at 150,000 tons. Do you know she only holds 2,600 guests? She could easily hold twice as many, but that's the space ratio. That's the spacious nature of the world's still only fastest ocean liner, passenger ocean liner afloat. And something that is um, absolutely worthwhile to mention to people, we're seeing more time, more people with more time and more money enjoying world voyages. And here is 123 nights aboard Queen Mary 2 beginning in January of next year. So starting and ending in New York. But look, if you follow the path, you can see that uh, we are traveling around the west coast of Africa, and then with an overnight in Cape Town, everywhere you see the overnights from Melbourne to Sydney to Hong Kong to Singapore and Dubai as well at the conclusion. And then through the Suez Canal, through the Mediterranean, back to Southampton and then on to New York. And so what an incredible world voyage. And everywhere you see those overnight calls, it's the possibility and option for guests to join the ship. So in other words, Yes, it would be great if we all sold a 123-night world voyage this afternoon. But the fact is, for guests looking for those more unusual or what we call exotic itineraries that sometimes are only available in the Southern Hemisphere during what, what would be considered winter in the Northern Hemisphere or, southern, or summer in the Southern Hemisphere, is the time that they are available. So here, in breaking that down a little bit, in talking about segments, you can see how 
completely doable this is for people, right? Perhaps then you'll pair this with some sort of African safari or further journey if they decide to take this first segment from New York onto Cape Town. Or perhaps uh, from Sydney to Southampton for this 61 night voyage. And then another opportunity to board the ship in Dubai. So perhaps maybe they'll travel a bit in the Middle East, board Queen Mary II, and take the ship back to New York. And of course, that final leg, that iconic segment from Southampton back to New York with all the excitement of, of all of those guests and the camaraderie they felt and how special it was to travel together. And many of them do form, of course, strong friendships. Queen Victoria, and I mentioned to you Queen Elizabeth, is her sister ship at just 2,000 guests and about 90,000 tons. If you know the Holland America Pinnacle class ships, you then know Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth. Queen Victoria has some wonderful itineraries that I'm going to go over in more detail momentarily, but first I want to show you another world voyage option. And so this begins in Fort Lauderdale and then goes on to Southampton after 96 nights. And that's where it comes in handy to then move over to Queen Mary II at the end of Queen Victoria's world cruise in Southampton and take the final leg seven nights back to New York. But this is also incredible because it covers a lot of different ground and really a full circumnavigation of the globe, including the Panama Canal. And then here you see from Southampton to Fort Lauderdale, where the ship originates. So some coming from Europe will board there. Others from North America will board in Fort Lauderdale. The first leg through the Panama Canal, of course, always iconic, always exciting. And then from San Francisco on through the South Pacific to Sydney, and then continuing on to Southampton. So really, sometimes we say, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Sometimes that's how you might need to process or digest a world cruise to say, well, guest, if you're not ready for the complete voyage, this is a perfect time to join one of those segments. And Queen Elizabeth, and something that uh, she offers is not only wonderful springtime uh, itineraries in Japan, which is such a, a great opportunity in, a, in a, a land where the language barrier can be a detriment, but it is ideal to travel aboard a Cunard cruise aboard Queen Elizabeth. So you can see we have a nice season in the spring here on our round trip uh, Tokyo, Yokohama itineraries. And then the ship makes its way Trans-Pacific to Alaska. And so in Alaska, and now I'm talking in 2024, although we have uh, also a season in Alaska that is just begun uh, now, but next year, 10 round trip sailings from Vancouver. So we offer glacier viewing on every voyage, whether it's Glacier Bay or Hubbard Glacier, full days in port. In fact, the itineraries are designed so that Queen Elizabeth oftentimes is one of only two ships in port. And isn't that a breath of fresh air in some of those small places like like uh, Skagway and Ketchikan. And then uh, not only Alaska inspired experiences from a shore excursion perspective, but also insights from experts. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, what we do there in terms of um, lecture series and different experts and people that travel with us. Here you can see our full lineup as we make that repositioning cruise from Yokohama to Vancouver. Primarily, we are doing 10 night round trip Vancouver itineraries, but you can see how this is not necessarily tracked cruising. Each one is a little bit different or a little variation. One might include Icy Strait Point or perhaps Misty Fjord, or perhaps it's Tracy Arm or Haynes or Wrangell or Sitka. You see, each one has so much to offer. So while we know it's impossible to memorize all of these, the tools are all there for you, but I think the point uh, that you would want to really share with clients is that this is an incredible option, especially for those who are celebrating something special. Cunard is, uh, is a great choice for them.
So here you can see an itinerary example for June 21st of next year, and then July 11th. Each one, again, a little bit different. They vary, and so that, that's what makes it special. Guests can choose. And then, of course, in Alaska, culinary experiences abound. So it's not only what the guests choose in terms of dining, should they go ashore and enjoy one of these different dining venues, but also our Alaskan-themed enhanced afternoon tea is quite special with sweet and savory, including pumpkin scones and uh, uh, shrimp-inspired items, as well as uh, perhaps a glass of uh, Perrier Laurent uh, maybe the rosé version in our afternoon enhanced tea with a glass of champagne. But we also have wonderful cocktails inspired by the scenic beauty of Alaska and culinary opportunities throughout, uh, not only the ship in alternative dining venues, which by the way, we do have our Lido will turn into uh, specialty dining venues. And in Alaska, it's an Alaska inspired theme. So sometimes people may wish to have a more casual dining experience in the evening if we're on uh, one of our gala events. But I will tell you the gala events on board Cunard are something special. It is like New Year's Eve. And so we call it uh, Dress to Impress at the Spectacular Ice White Ball. That's the theme in Alaska. So ladies might wear shimmery silver or a glacial blue, and the gentlemen will wear a jacket and tie, or certainly a tuxedo is the norm. And we do offer tuxedo rentals on board, so no need for them to take one along. But the fact that we have naturalist experts that provide bridge commentary during the day is such an immersive part of the Cunard Alaska experience, and that's in association with the National Park Service, but also the heritage guides and the native voices of Alaska that travel with us to really bring to life the culture and heritage of the indigenous people. It's so much a part of what they want to share with you. And then, of course, the beautiful scenic glaciers and just the scenic beauty of Alaska itself. For our enrichment programs in Alaska, we offer a variety of different scientists, explorers, and names that you might know from left to right, including Kenton Cool, including Bear Grylls. You've heard of Running Wild with Bear Grylls, who has ascended the mountain of Denali many times. And and also polar scientist Felicity Aston, and there are so many more. But this is the quality and the depth of the experience that Cunard brings in Alaska. But Queen Elizabeth also spends time in other places. So after she finishes her Alaska season, she'll go back through the South Pacific and then return to the waters of Australia and New Zealand throughout the winter months. And so you can see here what a depth of program that we offer, um, primarily round trip from Sydney, but also including North and South Island of New Zealand. And so therefore you can see as we go through the fall and through uh, the holiday period and through February of 2025 even, it's quite a variety. You know, same thing here. There are various segments. Again, it's almost impossible to memorize all the itineraries of Cunard. But if you just consider the fact that we are continuously on the move and look at this great itinerary, Australia circumnavigation in October of next year, round trip from Sydney. Uh, there are some really neat suggestions that you can make to people. And I feel that if you just simply throw some things out there to say, hey, you know, you've always talked about doing this or look at this one, New Zealand celebration over the holiday period. Uh, there are so many different choices and um, just a variety of different itineraries. So oftentimes when I meet advisors at different events, you know, Charles was talking about uh, the exceptional CLIA 360 and um, Jamie Paco, our VP of sales, and my other colleagues were there to meet so many of you. They ask, where does Cunard cruise from? And um, that's kind of an open-ended question. We have ships in so many parts of the world at really the optimum ideal times to be there. So I just feel like if you find out from your clients, where is it that you'd like to travel to? Surely there's a Cunard vessel for you there. So now I'd like to introduce you to some highlights of Queen Anne. This is our ship, highly anticipated, under construction, 
happen now. We just announced um, a few weeks ago that Queen Anne had received her crown. And what we mean by that is the beautiful red and black funnel. So progress is being made. Uh, she'll launch in just under a year from now, and we're very excited about that. Queen Anne will spend a lot of time in her home port of Southampton, England, but I think we all know in this industry that London is such an affordable air gateway city and so incredibly convenient and really is the gateway to not only Northern Europe, but the Mediterranean as well. And so with Queen Anne, we have a variety of itineraries to choose from throughout Europe, including the Baltics, where we'll be back, Canary Islands, British Isles, Norway, Iceland, and even the Northern Lights for some fall voyages. Now, this one is a showstopper. I have to say, please, everyone stop, look up, <laughs> take a picture of this screen. This itinerary of Iceland and the British Isles primarily uh, some key ports in Scotland, is going to be taking place in July of next year. Not only three ports in Iceland, but also an overnight in Reykjavik. What an incredible way to experience Iceland from the comfort of the beautiful brand new Queen Anne, simply with an easy flight to London. Uh, I think this is an exceptional uh, suggestion for you to make uh, to potential clients. We also have some very nice Northern Europe and Scandinavia itineraries. Even Mediterranean from Southampton. Look at how fantastic this is. From Southampton, just an hour and a half north south of London on the English Channel, your clients can experience even a Western Mediterranean itinerary in September of next year. Perfect after a lot of the crowds are gone from Europe and the Mediterranean traveling in September. It's an absolutely beautiful time of year. As we go further on into the season, how about this? The Northern Lights, the search for the Northern Lights all the way up to Tromso in the Arctic Circle. And then for a holiday celebration to the Canaries, some of the most popular and frequently visited for Northern Europeans in the holiday season. Queen Anne is offering a world cruise, her maiden world cruise in 2025. Don't miss the opportunity to sell this to your clients. So it's 98 uh, nights. And uh, the fact that it's a true circumnavigation of the globe, including Panama Canal, uh, and so many firsts for what will be Queen Anne's maiden world cruise in January of 2025. We opened the books for this uh, about 30 to 45 days ago. So of course, it's selling very well. It is a ship, though, of 3,000 guests. So there is still space available. But here's the important part from a sales perspective. And this is my tip and suggestion to you. Queen Anne does offer early booking benefits for all of her itineraries, including World Cruise. And look at this chart. You might want to take a photo of this. So it's categorized based on interior ocean view balcony and then the grills, Princess and Queen's Grill, um, for the fact that as long as the booking is made by June 28th of this year, there is incredible value by booking early. And so oftentimes, I know you get the question, guests say, well, what is the benefit of booking early? Shouldn't I wait till much closer to departure? We all know that, no, that's not true. Booking early absolutely has incredible benefits. And for us at Cunard on World Cruise, it's everything from a very substantial onboard spending credit to transfers, to discounts off of our pre-voyage hotel program, to potential upgrades, to dining, a specialty dining. And now this is the steakhouse at the veranda, which is our absolutely hands down most lovely, for not only from a service standpoint and from the physical plant, it's a beautiful dining room, but the quality of the cuisine and the prime beef and the sides, fabulous desserts, specialty cocktails. It's really quite a lovely experience that we have, which is normally uh, by charge. And so for lunch and dinner available, but we offer that opportunity built into a very nice value-added package for anyone that books Queen Anne World Cruise early. So I wanted to go back to Queen Mary too now just to highlight the fact that, and we heard earlier that yes, she has a world cruise, but Queen Mary is everywhere you want to be. And that includes the transatlantic crossings. We are certainly known for that. But take a look at this agenda. 
We start the primary season in the spring when we uh, return typically those guests at the conclusion of World Cruise from Southampton back to New York. But look at how we go all through the summer and fall and well into December. Now you say to yourself, my goodness, why is someone traveling on the North Atlantic in December? Why not? Queen Mary 2 is, as I mentioned, the fastest ocean liner passenger ship ever built, still afloat. And also the fact that that, that bow is very, very narrow to slice through the waves. The draft, the part that we don't see, the part under the water, 32 feet deep. So a very low center of gravity that the ship can move quickly through the Atlantic. And what's nice about this is, yes, people want to travel to and from Europe at all times of year. This is the ideal scenario for your clients that are interested in traveling to Europe, but just simply do not want to fly. For instance, how many of you are selling European river, river cruises? This is a great way to travel to or from Europe aboard Queen Mary 2. Not only do some voyages continue an extra two days to Hamburg, putting your clients directly in Central Europe. But even think about the beautiful Christmas markets cruises. Look at we go into December on the transatlantics. It's a perfect way to travel to or from Europe. But I have a little analogy here that I want to show you. And so we talk about a, a regularly scheduled transatlantic crossing is better than business class and it saves money. So on the left, you can see a little um, mock-up of what we did here on our transatlantic crossing in September with round-trip business class air on JetBlue out of Newark, including the Conrad London St. James for nine nights, which by the way, is also a hotel that we offer on our hotel programs. So we're at about $5,700, no meals, no transfers, no entertainment. That's your basic package, right? However, if guests take Queen Mary two for seven nights across the Atlantic in a balcony stateroom with one-way business class air on the return, they also are staying for a couple of nights at the Conrad London St. James. Now we're including those meals for the voyage portion, entertainment. This also happens to be an event voyage featuring the famous conductor Anthony Inglis and the National Symphony Orchestra out of the UK. It is going to be spectacular. They'll be performing several concerts and programs over the course of the transatlantic crossing. And for those of you that love to sing, you may even choose to join the choir that will accompany the National Symphony Orchestra for their farewell performance. So you get the idea at $4,500 what a much more inclusive program this is. Event voyages, though, are something special for us. Cunard was an innovator of many things in the cruise industry including the theme cruise, we call them event voyages now. So whether the focus is on dance or music or food and wine or literature, we have so much to offer. And by the way, these event voyages are also a great, great platform for you to promote a group perhaps around a specific theme or area of interest. Let's not forget about our furry friends though, guys. Queen Mary 2 offers the only kennels at sea. Yes, we have 24 kennels carrying some pretty, pretty special uh, dogs and cats. And why do we do that? Well, there are so many people that are either looking at a corporate relocation to or from Europe, or they're spending an extended period of time vacationing in Europe. They don't want to leave their fur baby behind because they are just like a family member. So on transatlantic crossings, it is possible to reserve a kennel for the pet to travel there. We have kennel masters that take good care of these beautiful creatures. And of course, the owners can go up and visit with them. The pets are very well taken care of and feel very comfortable, especially with the um, some of the uh, installments that we have, including the um, fire hydrant from Brooklyn and the lamp post from Liverpool. Queen Mary 2 is also a great way for people to travel to Europe without flying there at all in either direction. Take a look at this beautiful 24-night Norwegian Fjords cruise. We take a seven-day crossing to Southampton and then the Norwegian Fjords cruise built in between, then returning to Southampton and back to New York. So it is possible for guests to travel and cruise in, in Europe 
without actually having to fly there. Please mention this to people. It's an incredible convenience. We build these voyages specifically for these three segments all in one. So it's actually one voyage. What you can see here, M413A, and that's what that means. That means they'll stay in the same, they'll stay in the same stateroom the entire voyage. Something also that's very close to home and uh, we travel, I believe, to your hometown, Charles. That's Boston on the Independence Day celebration. And it happens to be six nights next year out of New York where we visit Halifax and, of course, Boston celebrating America's birthday on the 4th of July. This is a great way to introduce clients to Cunard and also for the entire family to travel together. It is quite a celebration. There's also a possibility of this Norwegian fjords voyage in July of next year. So you get the idea, a very similar concept. It's one voyage really incorporating three different segments. Not only do we offer Canada, New England on that 4th of July voyage, but also in the fall, we have a round trip New York that is also sold as two seven day segments or a full 14 day itinerary, including some of the finest ports along uh, this route including uh, the St. Lawrence Seaway. And it is such a beautiful time of year with the fall foliage. Here's a British Isles itinerary offering that same concept of round trip from New York via Queen Mary too. So I hope you've seen and, and uh, are getting some good ideas for clients. And then here, Northern Lights, this is in October. How exciting, right? All the way up to Tromso north of the Arctic Circle. Cunard is about the celebration, though, and we have a Thanksgiving cruise to the Caribbean and uh, several of the British Commonwealth Islands, including Barbados. And uh, this one happens to be over Christmas and New Year's. How very festive cruising out of New York. I also now want to talk a little bit more about Queen Victoria because I heard something in a recent webinar that uh, the fun and familiar destinations are back. Yes, people have been there, but they're excited to go back. And what we're primarily talking about here is Italy, France, and Spain. Queen Victoria spends a lot of her time in the Mediterranean. And this is so wonderful for your guests because it's easy to fly to a number of these different ports, whether they'll do something like this, which is round trip Rome, or part of it might be the seven day from Rome to Barcelona. And also the Adriatic Sea. So we cover so much more ground. You've probably seen the trend in the industry that Trieste is the new embarkation area outside of Venice. And so that's certainly easy access about 90 minutes away. But here we're not only incorporating uh, the Strait of Messina, uh, as well as Naples and some familiar places in Italy, but the Adriatic as well and Greek Isles. Istanbul, of course, is an amazing destination, but so is Ephesus in Turkey. The crossroads of Asia and Europe. Queen Victoria, here's another sales tip and an idea for you. Queen Victoria is doing uh, a 52 night round trip Fort Lauderdale around South America. This is so popular. I have to say, we also opened this the same day we offered Queen Anne. We opened the books for Queen Anne for World Cruise. So this is another fantastic option that comes with similar early booking benefits and it's round trip South America. Don't delay though, this one is even more popular. Um, as we finish up here, I wanted to just kind of recap a couple of selling points, if you don't mind. So with Cunard, we are still the only regularly scheduled transatlantic crossing service. And on those transatlantic crossings, we have the kennels at sea, which are so popular. It's important to book the kennels early. So what most advisors will do is suggest to their client, look, I need to be in Polar Online the moment the books open, and we give you very specific information about that. The moment the books open, on the day they open, so that you can not only uh, make for them their kennel reservation and then also get their stateroom uh, reservation all set. For those wondering, it does vary in price, but about $1,000 for the week is that kennel reservation cost. 
Cunard is an innovator in many areas. We were the first uh, to have a world cruise in 1922. And so therefore we have um, really perfected world cruise. And also I wanna challenge you to this. If you take a look at Cunard World Voyages and the price points and the different categories and what we include with early booking benefits, you will see what an incredible value Cunard is at every price point. So uh, not only exceptional itineraries, exceptional onboard experience, accommodations, service, enrichment programs, but the fact that uh, the, the value from a fair perspective is there as well. The insights program, we want people to go ashore and learn and do as much as they can. But then when, when they come back to us, we want to continue that enrichment, that education and that entertainment through our lecture series and, and enter, entertainment programs. The beautiful rooms on board Cunard from the iconic uh, and very peaceful and inspirational libraries to the excitement of the Queen's Room, to the entertainment, world-class entertainment, to live music per performances in the Royal Court Theatre. Cunard has so much to offer. Dining, of course, is exceptional on board Cunard, and there are various dining venues directly correlated to the guest accommodations. And then, of course, Cunard is ideal for you to recommend to anyone celebrating something special, special occasion, birthday, and also, yes, for multi-generational groups. The beauty of everything that we offer in terms of promotional pricing is that there's not a whole lot for you to remember. Our systems are designed to properly price for you and show you that best buy option. It's, it, it's exceptional though, and it's very important for you to um, make sure that you have the Guest World Club number, that's their past passenger number, because with Cunard that does unlock some additional opportunities. So what I wouldn't want you to do is lose the sale or mislead the guest thinking that there was something better because we didn't have that number, because it is directly tied to them. So not every guest is entitled to the same offers. It depends on their travel history, what they're interested in, and then also um, it, it sorts and filters that way for the best offers. We also do have the military benefit. Don't forget those who have served or are serving are entitled to up to $250 per person shipboard credit from the military benefit perspective. Also Carnival Corporation shareholder benefits for a thousand, uh, excuse me, a hundred shares or more. But if you want to buy a thousand, we would encourage that too. And then of course, for those making bookings on board, they come back to you and uh, those are also entitled to some combinability. Now, real quick, these are a couple of last slides, but they're important based on everything you've just seen and heard about now, how do I really harness the opportunity to sell Cunard and maximize it for yourselves, right? Number one has to do with groups. When should you hold a group on board Cunard? And this is just a, you know, this is, uh, this is a rhetorical question. <laughs> Whenever you have a booking, because what we allow you to do is even if you have just one booking, go ahead and turn it into a group. You never know what other friends and family they might encourage to travel with them, but also the fact that it will unlock an additional savings for even that just one stateroom. We have gap group amenity points that you can assign to various gifts and goodies. What a nice way to thank and recognize your client without having to dip into your own commission to pay for those gifts. Those group amenity points are actually doubled when guests are in Princess and Queen's Grill. And so therefore, again, remember what we said, you pay more, you get more. There is more pronounced value in the higher category. So it is absolutely worth it for you to quote in those categories. We have very low TC ratios, for the most part, one for 14. But if you look at the little box, the insert there for our Alaska programs, if you have 30 guests, we drop that down to one for 10. The 10th guest, you're getting a financial credit. The 20th guest, you're getting a financial credit. The 30th guest, you're getting a financial credit. I think you're starting to see the dollar signs add up now. There is a tool very little known about. We're going to continue to hammer it home, but it's called Cruise Night Sales. When you activate a cruise sale, this is a particular booking window that you're going to activate, perhaps for a one-week or a two-week booking window. Your clients are 
going to be receiving in addition to any shipboard credit that you already assigned through GAP, Group Amenity Points. They're also going to get it from the cruise night sale. So a lot of times for groups, you might want to say, make your reservation between this date and this date and you will get. It encourages people to go ahead and get off the fence and make the booking. It reduces the deposit in half, so it's financially advantageous for them. And it also adds on more shipboard credit. Besides the fact that we also do add on a bonus commission automatically, $50 per booking in Ocean View and higher categories. So uh, it's absolutely worth it for you to activate that. Okay. For those of you that are saying, gosh, I've had clients travel on Holland America or Princess or Seabourn, the world's leading cruise lines, but they've never come to Cunard because they're, they don't want to miss out on any financial pricing that they would get as a past guest. Well, I'm here to deliver the good news. We do have a reciprocal program in that way. So your client will receive a discount or offer equal to the public discount or offer exclusive to World Club members if they can provide some sort of proof of a past sailing on one of the other lines. And we have a simple way for you to submit that information. So I hope you're seeing some doors open for you and possibilities abound. You know what, just speaking about Cunard World Club, it is our past guest program and there are benefits for the guests that flow directly through you when you make the booking. So not only do the guests get everything they're entitled to as a, a valued Cunard World Club member and past passenger, they also get any benefits that you bring to the table, whether it's through your consortia or agency affiliation. So again, we want to be, and we are easy to do business with. One of the best pieces that is out there in the industry right now, and I feel like I can say this because as you heard from Charles, I was a travel advisor for many years, is this 17 page reference guide called the Travel Professional Reference Guide. You can order a hard copy of it through onesourcecruises.com. You can download the PDF, but it goes through the passenger profile that I shared with you earlier. Selling tips and suggestions, overcoming objections, even what to wear. You see pictures of different outfits. I mean, this is something that is so valuable. And if you don't mind me adding another tip here, what is the last thing you should do before you turn off the light at night and go to sleep? Take a brochure to bed with you. Read it. There is incredible information. Cunard, our marketing team, does an amazing job. We pride ourselves on the materials that we deliver to you, our valued travel advisors. It is all there in digital format, if you wish, on onesourcecruises.com, including the fact that you can become an expert on Cunard. We want you to become a Commodore in our academy. We will salute you. But then you can take your graduation cruise for yourself and a guest and really experience Cunard as your clients would. So on behalf of Jamie Paco, our VP of Sales and our entire Cunard team, we celebrate your success. We thank you for being a part of this webinar today. And we are here for you. We thank you for this partnership. Well, thank you everyone for uh, sticking with us. We hope that presentation was uh, good for you and uh, we hope that that was very informative for you. Um, we are a little over time, so I just wanna get through a couple of questions here and then we'll announce the prizes. So Monica, are you uh, ready to go for the questions? Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me, Zephan? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, so first question uh, should be a pretty quick one. Afternoon tea, is it the same time daily? If so, what time is that? I think that was from the beginning of the presentation. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch it, but yes, it's a good point. So our afternoon tea in the Queen's room begins each day at 3.30. So it's from 3.30 until 4.30, where guests, sometimes they will arrive a little bit early to queue up because quite frankly, as large as the venue is, the Queen's room, we do have so many guests on the ship that enjoy it. But that afternoon tea is complimentary and we will have some live music, but it's such a wonderful way to spend that time and meet uh, fellow guests on board. 
Great. Um, so next question, if you could say one thing about each ship, what would that be? What makes each ship unique? Good question. Yes, that's an excellent question. Um, you know, uh, I think based on the style and the structure and um, uh, the size of the ship, it, it probably has something very specific to do with region of the world it focuses on. When you think of Queen Mary II, our largest flagship of the fleet, uh, ocean liner style, so certainly transatlantics are a big part of what she offers, as well as some voyages in Europe, Caribbean, and then Canada, New England. So a more, uh, I would say more of kind of the open water or the deep water cruising and such. It might be a way to think about Queen Mary too in that aspect. Now, Queen uh, Victoria and Queen Elizabeth are smaller at just 90,000 tons. Queen Elizabeth uh, really spends her time in Alaska in the summer and then Asia, Australia, New Zealand the rest of the year. So if you kind of think of those two, <clears throat> you know, areas, and this are, these are generalities, but it gives you a bit of an idea. Uh, Queen Victoria, uh, so that was Queen Elizabeth. Uh, Queen Victoria does spend a lot of her time in the Mediterranean and Europe um, when not doing. Usually in the first and second quarter, she typically has done a world cruise. And as you heard on this webinar, she'll be going around South America in January of 25. And then Queen Anne is going to be based in Southampton for a variety of different itineraries. So I'm not sure that quite answers the question. But um, by the way, we do have a wonderful resource uh, called the, um, there's a calendar, a reference calendar that shows by color coding month of the year and such where each of the ships are. And I believe it's a very good, quick visual guide for advisors. All right, great. Well, thanks for that, Monica. Um, so the last question I think is uh, just kind of, you know, more about the presentation itself. So um, uh, where can we access or download this presentation PDF? And actually, I think what we'll do is we'll send uh, the recording of this webinar to everyone within 24 hours, of course. So you'll have the recorded webinar. And if you do want the PDF, um, feel free to maybe, Monica, if you're okay with it, they can maybe email you after the presentation if they want a copy of the actual PDF, and then you can share that with them individually. Yes, I think that's a great, great idea. I'd be happy to share that. Of course, the PDF file is a little bit more condensed. It's easier to transmit through uh, some sort of a file transfer service. But I'd love that because that means you would like to share this with your colleagues and potential uh, clients. So sure, we'd love to share the information. Great, thanks. Okay, well, um, I think that kind of wraps it up for our Q&A time. So I hope we got to everyone's questions either in the chat. I know Monica was active in the chat. So thanks for that, Monica. And um, that was kind of all the questions that were in the Q&A. So why don't we go ahead at this point and announce our two prize winners. Now, these names have been randomly selected by myself, and uh, Monica is going to announce them for us. So these are uh, our two Amazon gift card prizes, courtesy of Cunard, of course. So go ahead, Monica. Yes, we've got a $100 Amazon gift card for Dorothy, Dorothy Bystrom. And we also have a $100 Amazon gift card for Theoni Miha Mihalopoulos. Mihalopoulos. So Theoni and Dorothy, congratulations to you. Thank you to everyone. Uh, we know this webinar was a little bit longer than uh, what's normally presented, but you know, there's a lot to say about Cunard. So thank you everyone for your participation. Uh, as far as Dorothy and Theoni are concerned, uh, if they could please uh, send an email to um, uh, sales at cunard.com. Or let me rephrase that, Cunard Sales at cunard.com. And then we will be in touch with the link for the electronic gift cards. Great. And we will make sure, of course, that you receive your gift cards. So we'll uh, be in touch if necessary. So um, thank you so much, everyone, again, for being here. We really appreciate it. And thanks, Monica, for the excellent presentation. Um, and uh, thanks for being here to answer people's questions. We, we of course, appreciate that as well. So 
Uh, folks, we're, we are going to wrap it up here. So just a reminder to subscribe to Baxter Media's publications. Uh, you can subscribe by clicking the link at the top, top of the chat there in blue. And uh, be sure to check out our Baxter Media LinkedIn page as well. Um, as the webinar closes, you will be redirected to the Cunard uh, Travel Advisor website portal where you can access more information from them. And again, we'll be sending the recording of today's webinar to everyone within about 24 hours. And all of our past webinar recordings are available on the Baxter Media YouTube channel or at travelpress.com under the Agent Education tab. So you can find this uh, webinar recording there once it's available. And uh, yeah, with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. So again, thank you everyone so much for being here. And huge thank you to Monica from Cunard and of course to Charles as well from CLIA. And uh, thanks so much for being here, everyone. Have a great rest of your day and we will see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.